Okay, let's, let's, uh, let me introduce Mr. Stedman. He's been very, very significant to the restoration of the bridge and to the history of the bridge. He is a de facto dean and senior statesman of the San Antonio and South Texas Society of Professional Engineers. He retired as president of the W.E. Simpson Company of Professional Engineers. He worked as a founding member of the Restoration Group and was the person responsible for listing the bridge as a civil, a Texas civil engineering landmark. So if you see the plaque, if you go over to the bridge and you see the plaque about it being a, a state landmark, he worked on that centrally. Um, he also got it listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, so he's going to talk about kind of the engineering history of the bridge based on his long history of working in that capacity. Mr. Stedman? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here, and at my age, I'm glad to be anywhere. <laughs> if you talk about age, historic, the Hay Street Bridge was built originally in 1881. It's 132 years old, the trusses themselves. It served as a railroad bridge across the Nueces River west of Uvalde. When the railroad wanted to cross all the east side streets, the city demanded a viaduct for traffic to get over the main line of the railroad. So the bridge then was moved, and it couldn't be moved because the members were all pin connected, large, large metal pins connected each, each joint. It could, uh, at that time, it was new enough that the pins could be removed and it could be brought over here in pieces and re-erected. It was re-erected, brought over here in 1910 and re-erected where it is now and has been since 1910. So again, it's something that's older than I am. <laughs> and, uh, she, she mentioned that uh, it was designated as a historic structure by the Texas Society of, of uh, uh, the American Society, the, the Texas section of the American Society of Civil Engineers as a Texas Historic Civil Engineering Landmark. It's also listed as a historic bridge by the city, by the Historic Foundation, by the Texas Historic Commission, and as she mentioned, it is now listed as uh, on the National Register of Historic Places. In uh, 2000, really, the effort began to, to uh, restore the bridge. And it was about that time that the, the restoration group was formed. And the Hay Street Bridge Restoration Group was composed of East Side citizens, the uh, the uh, City Planning Commission, Conservation Society, and my my interest, the engineering groups. Uh, I might mention that the Conservation Society was the first big contributor, something like fifty three thousand from the Conservation Society. Our engineering firms and individuals contributed something like 50,000. We were able, the, the restoration group was able to donate to the city $189,000 toward the city's required 20% to restore the bridge. We were fortunate in getting federal funds to restore the bridge. We went to Austin before the uh, Texas Highway Commission. Went, before, went uh, there, there were a hundred projects looking for funding. Only five could be funded. And we had only five minutes to make our presentation. So, we made that presentation, and just at the right minute, Senator Wentworth 
came in and addressed the commissioners and answered questions that they might have. We, uh, we then were one of the five projects that were granted the federal funds. The 80% amounted to $2,089,000, million. $2 the city was required to raise the other 20%. In order to do so, the city thought, when we first approached them, that the city thought that they owned the bridge, but it uh, turned out that the railroad owned the bridge and the property that, was, that it was on. And that cost us about five years while the city and the railroad were using legal means to make an agreement to transfer the property from the uh, railroad to the city of San Antonio. Uh, the, the, um, the restoration took place after a five years delay and another delay Finally, about 2007, the restoration really began with uh, Patrick Sparks' company, who had restored the New Braunfels House Street Bridge, doing the engineering uh, for, for its restoration. It was all handled very well, and since the uh, trusses themselves were out of wrought iron, they didn't rust, they're very durable. All we had to do in restoring the trusses was to clean them and paint them with linseed oil. Now, it was different because when we brought uh, the cross members supporting the deck, when it was brought here, it was widened from 16 feet to 25 feet. So the 25 foot members, both on the deck and on the overhead were regular steel and they had to be uh, brushed, sanded, and uh, repainted. But the trusses themselves, wrought iron, were very durable and you can see as you cross the bridge that, that in fact we did have to replace some rivets and in order to do, do that there was no one in this area that knew how to do riveting. <laughs> well, a man from a man was brought in from Michigan, uh, sort of a donated service, to show our contractor how to how to do the riveting. So that <clears throat> that was part part of the uh, restoration. The rivets replaced, and then the uh, restoration was complete, and the main cost of the restoration, I might add, was the replacement of the two approaches, the two long con concrete approaches that had deteriorated. That was the main cost of the restoration. And let me add that as part of the restoration, those approaches became historic in themselves because they replaced a historic portion of the bridge. The brewery was uh, making the comment that he was going to attach to the non-historic part of the bridge. Can't do that, it's all historic. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and in 2005, some, some members of the restoration group, three of us, Nettie and and I and the president of the Conservation Society at that time approached Budco, who was selling their property along uh, Cherry Street. We approached them to see if they would donate the land north of the bridge for parking, for regular parking and tour bus parking, and for a small park for the neighborhood and for the whole city to use. Budco quite easily donated that property to the restoration group 
the restora restoration group, of course, was not uh, not incorporated, so we couldn't give them the uh, tax deduction that they needed. So we approached the city. The city said, well, we can't uh, do anything with it now, but we will take it and hold it until you can develop it. And the city council, in October 4, 2007, the city council accepted the property for public use and it is a direct link to the historic Hay Street Bridge. So that was the council's decision in 2007. The uh, bridge with restoration was completed and opened, reopened for bicycle and foot traffic in July of 1910 with a great big uh, ceremony involved. Huh? 2010. What? Did I go back to 1910? Yes, you did. <laughs> the good old days. I was born in 1926, so, <laughs> so I spent most of my life in the 1900s. <laughs> my wife catches me saying that also. Thank you for correction. Then, uh, most recently, of course, is the question of the brewery and. Uh, Someone else probably will tell you more about that, but uh, the city, the new city council, in a sense, gave that property that they said they would hold for us. They gave it to, to the brewery, in a sense. They were going to sell it to him and then give him $800,000 in, in uh, free money. In free our money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the uh, Esperanza group have been very helpful in our putting our case before the city, before the community and the city. And uh, we are now, as someone else will tell you, involved in the lawsuit to see that that property returns to its rightful owners. Yes, sir. <laughs> There are two spans on the bridge, one, one about 140 feet, the other one about 204 feet. The longer span is a Whipple Phoenix span. Whipple, Squire Whipple, Squire was his given name. Squire Whipple wrote the first textbook on the design of bridges. And Phoenix was the ironwork out of, of Pennsylvania that fabricated the uh, the Whipple Phoenix Bridge structure. So it is is very very rare and and this in addition to being historic. Wow, Mr. Stedman, didn't uh, the two spans were they not at separate locations before that's, they were combined here? That's I've heard that. I've heard that too. I, I, I know for a fact that the longer span came from from the crossing of U Valley. Okay. What, what is the other trust? One is the Whipple, what's the other? Uh, the other plateau. Right, yeah. Amy. Yeah, Mr. Civic, can, can you explain a little bit about the, I mean, when we're seeing the two stretches, what are we seeing from an engineering perspective? In other words, is it the way the weight is distributed, or could you tell us a little bit about what, we're, what we see when we see those two different kinds? Um, well, <coughs> I know it's hard. <laughs> the structural members spanning a distance depend a whole lot on depth. Of course, that uh, post tensioning has cured some of that, but. Uh, the, the longer span, of course, is a deeper truss. And uh, that's the reason, because it's spanning much farther. Does that, uh, that uh, answer, answer well, you? Well, and, and what's the truss? Is the truss? When you say it's a deeper truss, what's a truss? The, the truss are all the members 
and you'll, you'll find that they're mostly triangles. A triangle is the only stable geometric figure. So you'll see a lot of triangles in a truss. So all the members making up those triangles, both the top part and the bottom part, the top part takes compression, the bottom part takes tension. And so, and then they're connected with the diagonals and verticals to form the truss. Yes, sir? Sir, I might not have understood your explanation, but it seems to me there's two different kinds of supporting members. The there one is. is round and it's in four parts and it's riveted together. And the other one looks kind of like an I beam to me on the other span. Can you talk to the different construction techniques? No, they're yes, both, they're both in length. Talking about uh, is the actual makeup of the members. One of them oh, is sort of round, yeah. and the other is more like I-beam. Oh, you're talking about the members that are made up of sections of yes, a sir. circle yes, and sir. riveted together. Yes, sir. That that's the, the designation of the Phoenix part. Okay. That was a particular no, design of the Phoenix uh, Bridge Company out of Pennsylvania uh -huh. to make those members out of sections riveted together. Well, it's beautiful to see. Yeah, thank yeah. you.